no one person is an expert, and I think this machine is going to be a similar transition as a 41 to the 48. You know it's better, you see this wall, and you're not sure that you want to cl climb over. So uh, it's a new system, a new language. I call it Gen 5, and uh, it'll take a while, but I'm sure uh, next year this group will be right out there with it. So let's take and uh, is this big enough? Can you see in the back all right? Is it? Okay, the case, I mentioned Gen 4, Gen 5. Well, that'll help, yeah. Excellent thing. And uh, the authors of the two uh, plotting programs are, are, are below the machines. And uh, the uh, left one is the screen capture. The right one is something that HP started using a few years ago. And I'm not sure I understand it, but uh, everything is generated on a computer, so you get a computer-generated image, and it's not connected in any way to reality as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they love to have that shadow on the bottom down here. Uh, every photo I see, I take it away, because I don't like it. I want a straight-on view of uh, the machine, and uh, shadows uh, require that I have to have extra margins, and I want to take the margins away and have it as large as possible. Noted. Noted. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying no, no, I there should have at least one high quality photograph of the machine. Straight up. Noted. Thanks. Jason. Double noted. <laughs> Double noted. noted. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Gen 5 versus Gen 4 based on the official HP data sheet information and uh, Joseph and I uh, shared back and forth several versions of this and he said Richard uh, I gotta make the gen, uh, make Prime a little bit bigger if you set them side by side the HP specs are pretty close so it's uh, uh, shorter, narrower, thinner smaller by 46 percent in volume and heavier by 16 percent because Ooh. of the smell burning or are you I think we're alright <laughs> I smell something burning I think we're okay. If my hair's on fire, let me know. You're right. <laughs> okay. And it has fewer keys by one or two. What, what it's a large it? case, but it still fits in a, in a shirt pocket. It's going to look bigger. Than because he wanted to make it big for some oh, reason. It's not clear. So it, uh, yeah. it'll fit in, in almost every shirt pocket, so it's not that big. Although everybody looks at the Class Pad 400 and say, Should it probably be small? Uh, here's my justifications for the generation numbers. This table is found uh, in a number of places. Yes, uh, you may have seen this last night when Cyril shared his uh, clear back. Yeah, remove the clear back of the front. Just be careful. Uh, so here's the basic information of, of what I call the HP high-end calculators from day one. I included 35 on there. Uh, because it's it's what started everything, okay? Even though it's not a generation per se. Okay, is Prime's case the thinnest? Now, any HP folks here uh, who know the product line might want to answer this question. The official dimensions are given the weight, little, just a tad, teeny tiny tad. You should have squeezed that .04 out of there, and so it's eight ounces, but um, a USB port. And as you can see on the uh, bottom here, the end top view. And when uh, 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 Tim that? gives his talk, we'll What's go to see the Well, yeah, maybe it's uh, so many grams. Uh, if only we had a unit conversion calculator of some kind. <laughs> yeah, we'll Does that. anyone here have one? Good. Well, I can I make one quick point? Um, just so everyone knows, the, the bottom case here is actually not white. It's actually black on the final product, just so everyone is aware of that. Good choice. Uh, from, from what? The previous from the white that you show here. It's actually black. Oh. Just, I'm just letting you know. So, sometimes I have machines and I... I, I, I it's all I, had a, I took a machine out that was about four or five years old. And somebody looked at it and said, Where'd you get this? <laughs> They'd never seen it before. Yeah. Um, the LEDs flash. Uh, I'm not, not sure how practical that is. Although if you're standing... I guess you're standing I in front of you. You, you, you can tell, tell that it's sick. It yeah. Because... If somebody had the machines in here, I could walk on there. I couldn't see the machines. You know, there's too many laptops in the way and all that. Uh, the keyboard has 48 keys. 
Hmm. A middle section of 10 keys plus the four-way cursor. There's my tally of, uh, of the uh, key count here. And I was sensitive to that because the, the uh, image you saw in the beginning was a blind drawing which I made. And so I, I became conscious of how many keys were there. Hmm. The keys have a distinctive click. A thin keyboard, of course, will have less travel. Uh, which is, for anybody who cares, is 24 mils typically, at least I measure one key, it's not a statistical number, and it snaps about four mils from the bottom. And you can see from the photograph here, I'm measuring the log key of the machine I have. Hey Richard, how does that compare to say a 12C or another product that we use? I knew that question would come up, I have the information, but I didn't okay. derive it. Okay. It's, 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 it's called numbers the are shorter. Okay. Um, some years ago, I, I put the, uh, a number of machines, HP, TI, and Casio, on an Instron machine so that we, I could bring it down and plot it right. and see the, the force and the travel and, and all of that. Um, I, I just don't remember that. No was, problem. No, that's good. Prime shifted colors. Um, I guess there's been enough discussion within HP that I don't need to... Uh, a harp on that. Uh, the one for me is the light blue, but of course, I didn't even include the alpha because nobody can read it. So it has a three and a half inch diagonal, 320 by 240 multi-touch color screen, and that's a photograph. That's not a screen capture. Uh, since my, one of my hobbies is microscopes, I, I tend to look at things close. Uh, these are the individual pixels of what a prime screen looks like. Um, my, my speculation is that this line here is a horizontal pixel sense line. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, I don't know where the vertical sense lines are. They could be buried in, you know, every, uh, yes. every pixel has uh, this space in here. I have, uh, and, and, and actually the colors, and I didn't double check, but I think it's closer to yellow than to green. Uh, at least for my eyes and what have you. So instead of it being, you know, uh, red, uh, green, blue pixels, it's more like red, yellow, blue pixels. But you don't really know what this care. And I don't know what the significance of the lower left corner, there's a little notch here, and I don't know exactly what that is. It must be something related to the pixel, because there's a little bit on the upper left corner, as well as, as, well as a, a lot out of the lower left corner of, the, of each pixel. And I think you'll get an idea, this is about 170 times magnification. So you won't see this with your eye. You get a better idea of what that magnification is. And in fact, we, we saw just a small portion of, of this. Now, uh, many people who are playing with Prime uh, didn't realize that you could touch the upper right corner and, 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 and uh, get a zoom in view of what the battery information is. I wanted to actually measure the correlation between the battery indicator and the battery voltage, but uh, uh, time is always limited, and I think I figured out uh, why it didn't immediately work. 100% is 11 bars, and maybe Tim can get into the frustrations of dealing with the symbols and things, uh, how many bars for what. 75 percent it, it'll be 100 100 100 a bang it'll be 75 so there's no 85 or, or anything like that and that's eight bars 50 is six bars and 25 the three bars change color as a warning that you are near the cliff and of course you, i don't know if you can see zero because the machine's off <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, this is just a, 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 re a report of what I was attempting to do. Uh, lithium, lithium ion batteries are fairly, quite flat, so uh, you're really sensing a very small change. And of course, modern electronics is getting better and better at doing that, but it's always a challenge. The low battery indicators seem too unstable to be able to correlate the battery voltage, and I'm not sure if that's an accurate statement because um, uh, I thought about it more and I think I figured it out, so I'll see the next section of battery here, we'll get to that. The icons are 39 by 39 pixels, by, by count, so if I counted wrong, tell me, Cyril, or Tim, okay. Um, and I, this is just an enlarged one, uh, again, under magnification. 
Uh, Prime supports uh, very dramatic graphing. That's probably one of the, the prime features of Prime is graphing. And thanks to some of these from Joseph, uh, these are some of the examples that uh, uh, are available. Here's some more over here. And of course, this is the one that uh, right here is on the website. Prime's uh, battery is uh, cell phone large. Uh, a USB 5 volt uh, charger is used, and uh, heavy users may use the Galaxy 3. Is that correct, Tim? Um, a cell phone battery uh, for increased capacity, not quite double. Okay? And uh, you can see that uh, you have a plus and minus uh, symbols on that battery. And like most of us would say, oh, I can apply DC voltage to that, those terminals, and I should have run the calculator. And, eh, mm -mm. Uh, so what I did is I built a battery substitute. I got out my table saw and I cut a block of wood here. And, uh, and then I took a, two hacksaw blades wide, and I cut two slots here, and I had a, some, some terminals of, of a breadboard thing, which I uh, 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 hammered into the end here to line up over here. Uh, so I have my own contacts, and then and I run the wires here. This is epoxy uh, to hold the wires, so I can have my own little test setup. Okay? And uh, um, what happened, of course, that when I inserted it, uh, the voltage dropped down, and I then could apply from my power supply uh, the voltage again. It was 25 percent. And I think what I had to have done is to maybe reset it by using a 5 volt uh, USB, and then it would might recognize. But I, I couldn't I couldn't vary the voltage and have it. You know, I wanted to measure the voltage of each of the 25, 75, and 50 percent. So I'm not sure. Uh, I was uh, pressed for time, so I didn't investigate. But I still would like to go back and do that. Uh, the battery contacts are, are labeled and they're, they're spring-loaded, what we would call pogo pins. And that what holds the battery, so if you, your back is off, it won't just flop out. And that's, of course, a very nice feature. Uh, the, the terminals are, when the battery's in there, the smaller our electronics get, the spacing becomes smaller and smaller. So even the idea of putting test probes in and what have you becomes a, 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 an increasing problem because you get smaller and smaller dimensions and most of us don't have expensive precision tools to do that kind of thing. Uh, you can see uh, from Cyril's machine the, the clear back and this is what it looks like inside. Uh, I have a 40 power stereo zoom microscope. I have a micro uh, soldering station, you know, temperature control. I've got a lot of micro uh, tools, uh, simply because microscopy is a little bit of a hobby. I write a lot of articles about USB microscopes and I publish them on another website. So I have the equipment to do that. I worked eight years, uh, seven, seven plus years in a microelectronics laboratory where we designed and built microelectronics to be injected into the human body. So small dimensions I'm very used to, but even with my background, I wouldn't suggest you get into the Saturday iron and start redesigning your prime, okay? Uh, the time has come, uh, we can say at this conference that maybe we shouldn't be encouraging people to tinker, but go ahead and try, your warranty's boarded. They want you to buy another one, so go right ahead. Uh, the case snaps together with the tabs, uh, you know, here along here, and if you look closely at, at the clear plastic back, and I, I suggest you you do that so that you know what you're into if you are going to attempt to, to take it apart. Because unless you've done this kind of thing before, um, your warranty is voided, okay? That's all I can say. Okay. Uh, this is a closer view of the, of the, I guess you might call the main electronics board, and uh, uh, the the printing on the uh, integrated circuits you can see there is, um, uh, I think the same people that laid out this were, are the people that do keyboard contrasts. Uh, it's uh, very to photograph it. You get, you get the right angle, and you, you, get, you know, it's, and then you got to post process it to try to see it. Uh, they don't need to worry about uh, you know not putting anything 
on there because you, you, it's very hard to read anyway. And, and uh, uh, but just for those people who care, there's what's on those three major ICs for those of you who, who get into part numbers and like to play with uh, knowing what the various things are. It's right there. Now, to get an idea of physical spacing, uh, the, that main connector in the center there, the pin spacing is two millimeters, and we're getting, you know, small enough that uh, you just can't use normal probes and things to, to, to get in there. And of course, uh, there's uh, what's called chip resistors and capacitors and things along here, and uh, they're, they're identified by a four-digit number, 01, 02, numbers like that, 20, 30, and that's the uh, uh, millimeters, and, and uh, well, I guess 0101 is about the smallest I've ever heard of. 01005. 01, okay. Progress, 01005, oh my God. Cell phones. 005, 005. <laughs> that is small. I mean, this is getting, you know, smaller than the grain of sand, practically. Uh, on the board here is the uh, Pogo pin, uh, fairly strong spit, pin connections. And as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, for holding your battery in. And uh, the little big square switch here that uh, Jason, I'm probably sure, has lots in his junk box. That's the reset button. Um, that seems to me almost to be a pretty solid, uh, expensive reset button in terms of what you really need to just intermittently do that. So it shows you the quality of the build of the machine. Hmm. Here's another view showing the USB port up here. And again, just uh, another view of it. Uh, this was not intended to be a uh, microelectronics review of the machine, but just a quick peek at the machine so you get an eye over, overview of it. Uh, the USB port is shielded up here, and uh, uh, have fun. <laughs>